This is a sauce. This is a sauce. This is also a sauce. But the one thing on everyone's mind is Where's the lamb sauce? sauce? Right here. What's up? Good to see you and you and you and you and you again. Hope you're doing well. So the thing about sauces is that they are integral to almost everything we eat. We dip things in it, we pour it over our food. Sometimes we even have it on its own. I'm looking at you chocolate sauce. Now a good sauce can turn a good dish into a really good dish. Or it can save a horribly cooked dish by turning it into something palatable. I mean, some dishes just aren't complete without a sauce. Eggs Benedict without hollandaise is just eggs on toast. Buffalo wings without buffalo sauce, well, they're just wings. And salad without salad dressing is just sad. There may be a countless number of sauces, but classically, they stem from five mother sauces. That being bechamel, velouté, espanol or brown sauce, hollandaise, and your classic tomato sauce. So over the next few weeks, we'll be taking a look at how to make them, as well as maybe a few variations. Oh, and before we move on, remember to smash the like button with the fury of Gordon Ramsay shouting at an incompetent chef. Just smash it with your, your finger or your mouse or whatever, smash it. With that out of the way, let's go make some bechamel. To make a basic bechamel, you only need three ingredients, flour, butter, and milk, all of which you likely already have at home right now. George Augustus Escoffier, author of what's considered to be the OG holy grail of French cooking, states that we should use almost equal parts of flour and butter mixed with about six to eight times the weight in milk. As such, we'll do just that. Melt your butter in a pan over low heat. Once it's entirely melted, pour in your flour. I see some videos saying that you should add your flour in stages or that you should slowly sprinkle it in. Ignore all that nonsense and just toss it all in. Begin whisking or working it until it forms a paste. What we're making here is a white brew. Try not to use a non-stick pot because metal and non-stick coatings don't go well together. Work your brew for about a minute or so or until smooth. The reason we're keeping it on low heat is because we want the brew to remain white and not gain any color. Once that's done, we can add in our cold milk. One thing to always remember is that opposites attract. If you have a hot roux, you add in cold milk. And if you have a cold roux, you add in hot milk. Gently pour in the milk a bit at a time while constantly working the roux. This ensures that you end up with a lump-free bechamel. Once all your milk has been added, season with salt and pepper. Also, while optional, I recommend grating a bit of fresh nutmeg into your sauce. As always, remember to taste and adjust accordingly. Cook it out for about 2-3 minutes and voila, you have a classic bechamel. If you want your sauce to be a little thicker, then just cook it out for a bit longer while constantly stirring. Now the sauce thickens and forms a skin fairly quickly once cooled, so try to keep it warm if possible. Now that you've mastered that, let's get a little bit fancier with a Mornay sauce. In another pan, cook your roux just as you would if you were making a normal bechamel. Once that's done, set it aside to cool. While your roux is chilling like a villain, pour in your milk into another pan. To that, add a quarter of an onion, a bay leaf, some salt, and some freshly ground black pepper. Place it over low heat and gently warm up your milk. Let the ingredients mingle and get to know each other for about 10 minutes. Once they've gotten all comfortable with each other and have begun making plans to settle down in the future, be a party pooper and strain your warm milk into your cold roux. Making a mess like me is optional, but in this case, not recommended. Work the mixture over low heat until smooth and glossy, just like you would if you were making a regular bechamel. And there you have it, how to make bechamel as well as a variation of a Mornay sauce. Now you can infuse the milk with other things such as mushrooms, morels, saps, other herbs, I guess chives, garlic, cloves, things like that. Or alternatively, you can make your bechamel first and then spice it up later. This is actually quite common when you're making things such as mac and cheese, where what you would do is to make your bechamel first and then toss in the cheese just to thicken it up and to add more flavor later on. Other things you could add into the sauce could be tomato puree, mustard. Uh, I guess you could go the sweet route, which is a bit odd, but you can try by adding, I guess, chocolate or something custody of that sort. I wouldn't really recommend it, but if 
if you're gonna do that, let me know how it turns out. But as you can see, you can create other sauces just by adding different ingredients to your base bechamel sauce. That's why it's called a mother sauce, because it gives birth to other sauces. But that's all for today. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, remember to like and subscribe and to share the video. You know, all the YouTube stuff. I know I say that in every video, but the only way to make me stop is for you to do it. So go do it. The next goal is for us to hit 400 subscribers and then to the moon. Also, let me know in the comments down below what are some of your favorite sauces or if you know where the lamb sauce is. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you beautiful people in the next video. Shoo.